Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back once again to my F123 My Team Career Mode campaign. This is round five, we're at the Spanish Grand Prix. If you haven't seen the last one from Monaco, I urge you to go back and check this, check that out before you check this one out. This is your last chance to do so before spoilers. Well, we finally got points on the board at Monaco. Let's keep that momentum going. We have something to build on. It took us four races, but we finally have some points. And the other good news is that we are racing on the, the variant of this circuit where that insufferable chicane is gone. And I think the vast majority of people would agree that it's good to see it gone. Good riddance to it. I could not stand it. I never understood the point of it, and I haven't played an F1 game since the 2006 version on PS3 that didn't have that insufferable chicane, and it feels sweet as a nut to drive. I enjoy the circuit a lot more without that chicane. So a very decent opening lap, but as I was pulling off to cool my tyres down, I got a notification at the top that I wasn't expecting. Piastri out of the session... What's happened there? The McLarens are side by side. And Piastri's going to pit. I don't think Norris wanted to, though. And Norris has kind of pushed Piastri into the pit wall. That is a very bizarre accident. McLaren, what are you doing? I'm not quite sure what happened there. That was a major mishap there. But we managed to get through Q1 without too much drama. In P13, um, we are a couple of attempts clear, actually, so that's the good news for us. Unfortunately, Iwasa got knocked out again, but here we are in Q2, trying to do a decent lap. Gone a little bit deep there, so hopefully we don't lose too much time. But I will say this, it feels so much better to drive this circuit, to drive this part of the circuit without the chicane. The two fast right-handers. You can lose more time for getting it wrong there now, though. So we've got to make sure we keep on the circuit and don't run wide. And we were not able this time, unfortunately, to get through into Q3. But it's P12 on the grid. Opportunities could come to us in the race. Never say never. Welcome along everyone to sunny Spain, specifically to the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. So many great moments in Formula One history have been written at this very track over the years, including Michael Schumacher's first win for Ferrari back in 96. That win was in the rain. We might have better weather here today, but we're just as overjoyed to be at the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalonia, and the popular opinion in the paddock is that we never wanted the chicane in the first place. That's now been gone, the final corner is much faster, and at 2.9 miles and 14 turns, we await the Spanish Grand Prix. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Sonoda, Magnussen, Sparkles, Ocon, Bottas, Stroll, Joe, Holkenberg, Albon, Iwasa, De Vries, Oscar Piastri, De Vries. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Natalie Pinkham? Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? What a quality performance. The big question, though, is how does that translate on race day? Can they hold on to that lead? And, of course, it's looking very close here today. A lot is going to be riding on those first few corners. And then the question becomes, who can manage their tyres so they're in a good position to push hard towards the end? 33 laps of the Spanish Grand Prix lie ahead of 22 drivers on the grid. Who is going to take the win today? It's lights out and away we go. Max Verstappen gets away decently. Perez seems away well as well. But look at George Russell from P3. He's having a go at the Red Bulls. He's going to try and go around the outside of Sergio Perez. He breaks later, but Perez just forcing him out a little bit wider. 
He has given him room, but I think Russell just doesn't have enough momentum. And he will have to settle for P3 for now. And the two Red Bulls lead the way from the two Mercedes. Right, switching over to our POV at the start now. We're starting P12. Can we get points for a second time in a row? It's lights out and away we go. We, Zenoda doesn't seem to get away very well. We don't have much room to pass him. But we did find a way past. We're also ahead of Magnussen as we head into turn one. But I haven't really got much all else room to go from there as Magnussen sweeps around the outside while Alonso balks me there. And I think, yeah, and getting blocked by Magnussen as well. So, yeah, we, we had a good start. But then into turn one, we got a little bit blocked. And Magnussen taking the opportunity, going around the outside and moving into P10. We are up into P11, though, so we have still gained a place off the start. I'm trying to find a way past Magnussen as quickly as I can. And I think I've got one. I'm going to try and go around the outside here. Magnussen covers the inside. I'm trying to go around the outside. I've gone a little bit deep, though, and I've been nudged by Ocon as I try and recover. And Ocon taking P11 away from me. And I'm now having to watch out in case Yuki Tsunoda bounces a go. So we did move up a position, but then we, we lost it. So we're back where we started now in P12. But it's a long race. A lot of opportunities could open themselves up to us. And these guys in front of us are duking it out just a little bit. So that's helping me stay with this battle. But how long I'm able to stay with them for, I do not know. I'm trying to stay with them. <laughs> And Alonso holding Magnussen back there. I believe Alonso has got a problem with his car and is limping. And Ocon going around the outside. I haven't got anywhere to go here. I'm not quite close enough. But Alonso gets backed up as Ocon gets past. And this allows me now to go around the outside of the Spaniard. And Alonso with his car issue is relatively straightforward to pass. I do feel bad for him in his home race. But... It moves us up a position and moves us closer to a points paying position. So three laps in. We are up into P11. Ocon and Magnussen having a little battle ahead. And speaking of battles ahead, this is Charles Leclerc shaping up to have a go on Lewis Hamilton. He's going down the inside of Lewis Hamilton. And Charles Leclerc moving into P4. Hamilton trying to fight him around the outside of the corner. But to no avail. So Leclerc improving his position in the Ferrari up into fourth and speaking of improving positions here comes Sergio Perez having a look at the lead Red Bull driver and Max Verstappen trying to defend but Perez taking the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix here Perez again no multi 21 going on at Red Bull Perez leading the way Verstappen in second here comes Lewis Hamilton trying to get back past Charles Leclerc and I believe he's got that done, but Leclerc around the outside of one. Has he got it? any momentum to get by? Answer, no. Leclerc is back behind the seven-time world champion. And I'm stuck behind Ocon and Magnussen. I'm trying to get closer, but we're in something of a DRS train. I can't see who's leading it ahead of Gasly. Oh, it's Magnussen that's leading it ahead of Gasly. But all the same, it's a bit of a DRS train with Magnussen, Gasly, Ocon and myself. So we're a little bit stuck here. And here comes Max Verstappen eyeing the lead back from his teammate. He's taking the lead back from his teammate. Verstappen taking the lead, heading into turn one. But Verstappen has gone a little bit deep. And Perez just simply says, thank you very much. I will take that back off you. And look how much more satisfying it is to watch without that chicane there. I thought that about the actual race this season too, but here comes Carlos Sainz on Charles Leclerc. He's taking P5, but he's not done there. He's trying the double overtake on both Leclerc and Hamilton. He's got it done. Carlos Sainz giving his home fans something to cheer about as he takes P4, doing the double overtake there, and Leclerc down to P6. And I'm starting to struggle with my tyres just a little bit. Ocon and Magnussen are pretty much gone. And Lance Stroll is giving me some hassle from behind. And now it becomes more of me trying to keep Stroll behind than it does trying to get part. And look at this, Ocon has spun. Esteban Ocon has spun. He has gone round. What happened there? It looks like Ocon just got on the throttle too early and the car, yep, yeah, it went round. No safety car there though. Ocon was able to recover. 
I was saying that this race is starting to become more about me worrying about Stroll from behind than trying to get after Magnussen. And I am now worrying about Stroll from behind because he's having a look down the inside. He's getting the move done, but I'm going to switch to the outside. I'm going to break later. And that's a bit of wheel banging there, but we're able to hold the position. And Stroll not able to hold on. So able to get past, should I say. So we hold on to the top 10 after Ocon spins. That's great for us. We are in a point paying position. And now it becomes a case of can we get past Magnussen? Here comes Lando Norris on Charles Leclerc. And Leclerc's day just goes from bad to worse. He did move up to fourth. He lost that position. He lost the position to Sainz. And now he's lost the position to the McLaren of Lando Norris. So a rough day for Charles Leclerc. But now, again, eyes set on Magnussen. What can we do about him? I'm getting ever closer. But at the moment, it just doesn't look like there's a way past this circuit. It's possible to overtake, but you've got to line these two corners up absolutely perfectly. And with tyres that are gone, it's easier said than done. Magnussen pits, so we're going to stay out a lap longer and pit on lap 14, which is exactly what we're doing. Perez comes into the pits and he comes out just in front of us. We are now pitting. We're needing a flawless pit stop to try and hold on to position. Man, this pit lane feels slow when you're watching it on the TV camera. Change of tyres, jobs are good and, and on our way we go. And hopefully that should see us to the end of the race, barring any red flags, of course. Leaving the pit lane now in P13. Magnussen's undercut, though, is absolutely huge. With that undercut, Magnussen has gained nearly four seconds in one lap, so... We've got a lot of work to do to try and catch that back up. That just shows the power of the undercut and the advantage of the fresh tyres on this game. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc's bad to worse day gets even worse and the pain continues. His car has given up the ghost. Leclerc's race is over. But this race is only just beginning. Verstappen now getting back after Sergio Perez. And Verstappen getting past Sergio Perez. And as long as he handles turn one right, I feel like that is the move done for Max Verstappen. Can he get it slowed down in time? Yes, he does. So Max Verstappen retaking the lead and Sergio Perez will have to settle for second here. But now we're battling Magnussen yet again, trying to get close enough. But it's hard to get close enough in the final sector. So we need to just push as hard as we can and get these last two corners absolutely spot on. I don't think we're close enough this time, but I'm still going to give it a go. I'm going to drain what's left of the battery on the straight, and we're going to give it full beans. I was very wobbly out of the final corner, though, and that might just cost me for now, so we're going to have to see how close we get. It's not close enough. We are not close enough. We will have to wait another lap before doing it. And signs now. Wanting to give his home fans something more to cheer about because he's going for a home podium. Here goes Carlos Sainz down the inside, up into P3. George Russell fighting it off, though. But Sainz able to hold on to the position. And Russell trying to fight it off with dear life just couldn't do it. And now we are much closer to Kevin Magnussen as we head into the final two corners. And we should get a beautiful run here. We're very so-so out of the last corner, but look how much momentum we have. We've got a slipstream. We've got overtake. We've drained the battery. DRS open. Round the outside of turn one we go. And we are, are we able to move up to P8? Yes, we are. So moving into eighth position there, just look at that. That was sweet as a nut, that move. That had been coming for a while. And yeah. Catching Magnussen and passing him. It took a little while, but we got there. Gasly, I think, is just a little too much of a tall order to get by. But Magnussen is now coming back at us. He's going to have a look down the inside. I'm going to cover and force him to go in very tight there. And that's not going to work for Magnussen. He has to back out. And we maintain P8. So good racing there from myself and Magnussen. It's quite an entertaining battle as we try and catch Pierre Gasly. Meanwhile, Russell has decided he wants P3 back from Carlos Sainz. 
He's going around the outside to do it. And I think Sainz trying to fight him off. And Sainz has fought him off. So Russell not able to quite get it done this time. But next time around, Russell has overtake DRS slipstream and was much closer and able to get the move done. And Magnussen, I think, is going to have one more go at us here. Magnussen looking for the inside line. Magnussen taking the inside line. But again, he's got to go in that bit tighter and we can just sweep round the outside. I've given him plenty of room. Magnussen electing not to use it. And we move back into P8 after Magnussen briefly passing us. And here we are on the last lap. Lewis Hamilton just putting the nail in the coffin of Ferrari's day by taking P4 away from Carlos Sainz. It looked like he could be in the fight for a podium, but Sainz in the end just didn't have the pace. And we're now on the last lap. Magnussen's trying to have a go at getting through, but we've covered the inside. And from this point, I don't really think there is anything Magnussen can do. It was a solid race from us. We started in P12. We've had good pace all the way through the race. And we are going to be rewarded with another handful of points. It's P8. More championship points for us. And a decent race finish. I will accept okay, that. pick up rubber and bring it home. team effort then which has paid off in spades a great victory here at the spanish grand prix so natalie what do you think helped them deliver this result i want to know if that was as easy as it looked an absolute masterclass today Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. So after what was quite an enjoyable Grand Prix to drive, these are your results. Max Verstappen, once he got back past Sergio Perez, he was just gone. He set fastest lap and just disappeared into the sunset. Perez, though, making it a 1-2 for Red Bull, so still a solid result for the team. George Russell getting on the podium for Mercedes. Hamilton getting fourth. Carlos Sainz making it into P5. And then it's Norris Gasly with a good result for Alpine. Myself, Magnussen and Sonoda scoring the final point. And it's a miserable day for Aston Martin with 12th and 13th. Fernando Alonso obviously having those car issues. But Lance Stroll was just nowhere. And he made quite an early pit stop as well. So that, I think, also kind of cost him as he lost his tyres. But it's more points for us. That's what I'm happy with. Another four points. We got 10 of them in Monaco. We've now got four. And I feel like, you know, the work we've done to improve the car is starting to show. There's still a lot of work to be done, though. But for today, I will take that result. It's a good result for us. And Max Verstappen extends the lead in the championship again. Lewis got close after Monaco. But Max just reminding everybody who's boss and just saying, hey, forget about it. Perez and Hamilton are now tied for second in the championship, with Hamilton obviously getting the place on count back, having actually won two races this season. Perez yet to win a race. Actually, no, I think Perez did win a race. He won Baku, didn't he? What am I talking about? But obviously, with Lewis Hamilton winning two races on count back, Hamilton gets the place. Russell fourth in the standings, Leclerc fifth, Alonso signs and Norris are next, and we are ninth. And in the Constructors' Championship, we are sitting in 7th, so on target to achieve our goal of finishing in the top 8, which is the important thing. 
and what we're targeting to do. Well, thank you for watching this race. Don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content from me. Until the next time, guys, I've been Joe. Thank you for watching. TTFN, ta-ta for now.